We just bought a brand new Tesla Model 3, and I am here to tell you it is better than the old one. It's also a little bit worse. Don't worry, I'll explain. The 2024 Tesla Model 3 Long Range is the sixth Tesla that Edmunds has owned and actually our third Model 3 as well. And we will have plenty more to tell you as this car enters our long-term fleet. But today we're here at the Edmunds test track to tell you what's better and what's worse, starting with a big one. Yep, you read that right. We just ran the Edmunds EV range test in the new Model 3 and it did 338 miles. This car, long range, 18 inch wheels, is rated by the EPA at 341 miles. So it did worse by a factor of about three miles or 0.9%. Now, of course, big picture, that's not all that bad. It's pretty much right on with its EPA estimate. Funny enough, this car rated at 341 miles. That is actually the exact number we got on the 2023 car when we ran the range test. So it was almost like we were right all along. Are you stealing our numbers, EPA? This is important to me because Tesla has gotten so much better at this over time. We just got rid of our 2020 Model Y performance and that car borderline undrivable over speed bumps. The whole thing shakes and shudders. But I've driven newer Model Ys since then and they're all progressively a little bit better. Same thing is true with the Model 3. Like I said, Edmunds, we've owned three of them. This is our third one. And it is by far the best handling, most comfortable Model 3 yet. And I think that's worth pointing out because even though the suspension is much more comfortable in daily driving, the car doesn't handle any worse. We've been driving the old car and the new car back to back, back to back, and there's not really a big difference between the two, which is a good thing. This hasn't lost its handling edge. Another thing that jumped out at me right away is just how well you can see in this car. The hood is super low. The sight lines are fantastic. I am not a tall human being, but I love that the view is so great through this windshield. You can see exactly where you're placing the car. And I still think that Tesla has the best one pedal driving in the game. And apparently they think that too, because in this car, you can't turn off one pedal driving, at least from what I've gone through in the settings so far. And older Teslas used to be able to dial back the regen to make it a little bit less, but in this car, you better get used to it because it's the only option you got. All right, now we take a quick dive into really minor complaints, but there's this little dip in the footwell right behind where the pedals are, and it's strange. It's at a slant like that, and your foot, if you rest your foot at a stoplight, it gets caught down below. And sometimes when you're just shuffling around your feet during a long drive, it gets in your way and it's really annoying. I'm sure there is a clear cut reason why they designed it this way, but sitting right here, I have no idea what that is. People of the internet, especially Tesla fanboys, hear me out. This car is great to drive. It is everything it needs to be and nothing more. Calm, easy, relaxing. You can tell that Tesla left room for an upcoming performance model, and that's a good thing because there appears to be one on the way. Speaking of, let's see how this Model 3 did in its performance test. The new Model 3 Long Range threw down some seriously impressive numbers on our track. It's the second quickest Model 3 we've run to date, hitting 60 in 4.2 seconds and the quarter mile in 12.3 at 114 miles per hour. The Tesla also did 0.92 Gs around the skid pad, and that's on all season tires. Now for context, we got the same number in a BMW i4 on summer rubber. However, the new Model 3's performance numbers are a great baseline, and they make me really excited for a faster version to come in the future. It's definitely still a Tesla. Toyota engineer would go to the emergency room if they saw that. It's part of the charm, right? Joking aside, joking aside, this interior is much nicer than before. Maybe not very different. If you line up the old car next to the new one, you know, things look the same. But I gotta say, the details, big and small, make a huge difference in the new Model 3. There's now ventilated and heated seats up front, both of which work really well. There's this cool strip of ambient lighting that runs from the back row all the way around the front of the car. And of course you can configure all the different colors and such. Uh, the door pockets have carpet in them now and the center console 
actually feels like it was built with the intention of lasting a long time, as is the headliner. This also used to be a very questionable area on older Tesla models, but it feels like somebody is learning and they spent more time screwing this thing together. And look at this, look at this. I've spent all day in this car and I just realized it has the scariest glove box I've ever experienced in a car. It's done by magnets. Even if you shut it slowly, it snaps and it scares the total hell out of you. And then of course we have the centered touchscreen, the command center for any Tesla product. Not too much new and exciting going on here worth diving into, but this is still the most responsive touchscreen out of any car in the industry. We're going on like 10 years now of the Model 3 being around and Tesla just being so darn good at this. It's true. If you love it, you love it. If you don't, you don't. That still remains true. The back seat also gets a display now so they can work with the air conditioning. They can control the audio. You can even move the front seat a little bit forward and back. It's a nice addition that makes the back seat just a little bit more comfortable. Then the sound system, weirdly enough. We drove the Cybertruck the other week and I had this feeling that Tesla was finally getting serious about in-car audio and the Model 3, it kicks. 17 speaker sound system in this long range model and it sounds fantastic. And then finally, this isn't going to be new information necessarily, but the mobile app, just all the controls with this car is still the best in the game. When it comes to phone as key, this works the most seamless. When you can control the air conditioning, the fan speed, all the settings in the car, everything about the app is just so dialed in and good. With our long-term fleet, we have six or seven cars that all have an app you can use. This app, the Tesla mobile app, is still the best out of any car you can buy today. But there's one thing, one thing that I just can't get over. So whoever woke up in the morning and decided that this car no longer needed stocks behind the steering wheel, I got some things to say to you. This car has predictive shift selecting, which basically means that when you're first setting out out of a parking spot or whatever, the car will give you which gear that it thinks you want based on what's around you. It'll take a look in the front, it'll take a look in the back and decide from there. It just happened right now. You see, I didn't have to select anything and the car went straight into drive. It works like, 70, 80% of the time, but every time I have to look at the screen and make sure it got it right because I don't trust it and I don't want to drive into a wall. You know how I can make sure I don't drive into a wall? By having a gear selector like every other normal car. And then there's the matter of the turn signals. It's not a stock behind the wheel anymore. It's left and right on the steering wheel now, just like it is in the Cybertruck. I just don't think this was necessary. In a car that's already borderline too simple, why did we need to take away more buttons and controls? Come on, Tesla. So in more ways than one, the new Tesla Model 3 is better than the old one. Yes, we wish it had more range. It would have been great if Tesla gave it 20% more range, but they didn't have to. The Model 3 has always had the specs to compete and do it well for this price point. What Tesla needed to work on was the smaller details, the stuff in the interior. And at least in our initial few weeks of owning this car, they tackled that head on. This is much better off because of it. They also tweaked the suspension to be more comfortable in daily driving. That's something this car has always needed. This is only the beginning of our story with the Model 3, so be sure to come on back to the YouTube channel to see everything else play out. But in the meantime, if you have a question about this car, drop it in the comments and let me know. Thanks for watching.